Okay, so now let's go on to some examples. The Cheesy Cheesy Poofies company wanted to know whether they should have a coarse or, oh, sorry, this should be coarse with an A, coarse or fine texture in their Cheesy Poofies. They, uh, they assembled, sorry, so many spelling errors here. They assembled a series of taste testing panels that tasted either the coarse or fine textured Poofies and gave it a palatability score. Higher score is better. Is there a statistical difference in the mean palatability scores, um, score between the two texture levels? Well, um, if you download the examples below and you look under the example one tab, you should see a data set that looks like this. This is the palatability score and this is the texture. And uh, I believe zero, let's just say, uh, zero equals coarse, and one equals fine, okay? Just so that we can make some sort of uh, recommendation at the end. Okay, so here we go. We have these uh, different sets of, of scores. So this is the score that, um, that one panel came up with, and that panel tasted coarse textured cheesy poofies. Um, this panel also tasted coarse, um, and that's the score it gave it. Let's go up to fine. So they tasted fine texture, and they gave it that score. Um, they also tasted fine, and they give it that score, right? So you could go and see um, what the different uh, scores are and uh, what texture that. Uh, they had, right? Um, so first let's think about what are our X and Y? What are our two independent samples? Well, the two independent samples here seem to come from the two different textures, right? So one group, um, one uh, group of scores, they all tasted coarse textured cheesy poofies. The other group of scores tasted fine textured cheesy poofies. So it might be helpful to us to sort this data by um, by texture, right? And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to ask, I don't know if this will work, yeah. So it would work if I move score over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just hit sort, right? Uh, let's sort from low to high. Okay, so here, these are all our coarse, cheesy, poofy uh, palatability scores, and here are my fine, cheesy, poofy palatability scores, right? Okay, so let's think about how we want to approach this problem. So first thing we want to do is create some sort of uh, hypothesis, uh, hypothesized population. So our hypothesized population is really going to say this that the coarse and fine textured cheesy poofies, there's really no difference between them. They're the same, right? And so the mu sub x bar minus y bar should equal zero. Um, and the alternative is that they are different from each other in some way. We don't know which one tastes better. I mean, we you could if you eyeballed that data a little bit, but, um, but for the most part, let's just be neutral and say, we don't know whether the coarse cheesy poofies are better than the fine, or if the fine cheesy poofies are better than the coarse. We don't know. Okay. So we want to know whether these palatability scores are, are different or if they're the same. So let's set a significance level for how different they have to be. And so our significance level could be alpha equals 0.05, Let's just go with that. <laughs> um, and then finally, let's set a decision stage. So here I'm going to draw an S dot. Can we assume normality? Well, they are different. Um, and let's look here. We have, uh, we have eight scores and eight scores. So the N is really low, right? So technically, um, we might say, hmm, we might not be able to do hypothesis testing. Um, but let's say for some reason that 
your teacher wants you to do it anyway. But one of the things that should come up when you see uh, low ends like this is that you should question whether hypothesis testing is the right way to go because it may not um, it may not uh, it may not really reflect the conditions that we need to have set before we can assume all this stuff. Uh, but just for the problem solving and practice here, let's go with it. But if you really wanted to be a smart aleck, you should say to your instructor, hey, I'm not sure it meets the conditions for hypothesis testing. I don't know. You may not want to be a jerk. OK. So here we set our little zones of rejection. right? And um, why don't we just go ahead and put in our, our uh, mu right here. That's going to be 0. Right? And it'd be helpful to find out the t values out here. right? And so why don't we go ahead and do that? What are our um, critical, critical t? So critical t are the boundaries. right? And in order to find the critical t, we're going to have to find the degrees of freedom, df of differences. Well, n, sorry. N sub x, we'll call x coarseness. So x will be coarse, cheesy poofies, and oh, y will be fine. You could use c and f if you wanted to. Uh, this is going to be 8, and this is also 8, right? So the degrees of freedom for each of these is 7, right? So this is going to be 14, right? So that's a pretty low degrees of freedom, right? That's why we can't assume normality here. And so let's find the critical t. Critical t. And so in order to find that, we would use t inverse, because we have the prob two-tailed probability, 0.05, and we have the degrees of freedom. And this gives us the positive version. So, so the negative version would just be the negative of that number because they're perfectly symmetrical. So 2.14. So the critical t is plus or minus 2.14. Great. So now that we have that, then we could go ahead and uh, look at the actual samples themselves. So step four is we need to find the samples mean difference, right? So we need to find x bar minus y bar. But we also need to find this mean difference's t. So the t sub x bar minus y bar. We need to find that, as well as the p value. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, I'm just going to write this as, we, we just started from step 3. And step 4 is really um, the mean difference. And that's just the average of these guys. Oops, too far. Average of these guys minus the average of these guys. OK, so that's their average difference. So this is saying that the coarse scores tend to be, on average, lower than the fine scores. Because when we do coarse score minus fine score, we get a negative number, right? So that, that coarse score number must have been small. OK, now let's find, um, oh, actually, before we go on, it might be helpful to find the standard error, right? Of this, uh, of this situation. So in order to find the standard error of the difference, what do we need to do? Well, we need to find the square root of the variance of x divided by n sub x, right? Plus the variance, variance of y divided by n sub y. There we go. So this is going to be our standard error that we need, right? Okay.
So in order to find that, it would be helpful to find each of these pieces by themselves, right? So let's find the, uh, the variance of x. Oh, well, I guess we could just find the whole thing. The variance of x divided by n sub x, right? And the variance of y divided by n sub y. I was going to put each of these on different lines, but I was like, eh, we could do all of it together. And then we could just add them all up here. Okay. So let's find that. So the variance, uh, so thankfully Excel has all these functions, right? <laughs> so the variance here, and let's just check and make sure that this variance will give us n minus 1. Okay, good. So the variance of x, right, divided by 8, right, and the variance of all my fine cheesy poofy values divided by 8, right. So we have these two variances, and now, um, and when we divide by n sub x, we're getting the standard, uh, we're getting the variance of the SDOM, right? And so if we add those together and get, then get the square root, then we get the standard error of the difference. So the square root of these two guys added together. And that is 11.16. So here, I'll just add this information. So the standard error of the difference equals, what do we say, 11.16? Yes, 11.16, right? And so in order to find this t, we need to have this difference, the difference between the means minus zero, and that's like nothing, over the standard error of the difference, right? And so we could easily do that now. So here, in order to find the sample t, we could put the mean difference, we already have it, minus zero if you really want, right? If you want to keep it technical, right? You don't need that minus zero. Um, over the standard uh, error of the difference, right? So our sample T says uh, the difference is not at zero, it's actually way down here, right? And is that significantly different? Well. One thing we could do is just stop right here and compare this number to this number. So this, this uh, boundary right here is negative 2.14. Negative 4.73 is like out here, so we definitely know it's like, it's way significant, as in like, it's way um, standing out from the expected mean. But we could also find the p-value. Now remember, in Excel, one of the one of the things is it needs a positive t value. Um, so if you have a negative t value, you just have to turn it into a positive one. But it's okay because it's perfectly symmetrical. The degrees of freedom that we're talking about are going to be this new um, deg combined degrees of freedom because we're always talking about the s dot now. And this is the degrees of freedom for this s dot. And so that's 14. And it is a two-tailed hypothesis. And so our p-value is 0 .0003. 0 .0003. So um, I won't write the last step here because I've ran out of room, but we could just talk about it. Um, the last step would be, do we reject or, ex uh, or do not reject the null? Well, we reject the null here because our p-value is much lower than our significance level. And our, um, our t-value, our sample t, is more extreme than our critical t, right? And so here, what we would say is that there is a statistical difference between the two texture levels. Um, one that is 
very unlikely to be attributed to by chance because that's what this p-value is. Um, if it was by chance, it would have a 0.03% probability. That's pretty low.